This episode of Real Science is brought to you by CuriosityStream. Sign up today at curiositystream.com slash real science and get free access to watchnebula.com. Whoa! Us humans are fleshy, vulnerable creatures. All of our insides and blood vessels protected by what is our largest organ, our skin. It protects us from the sun's rays. It cushions blows. It lets us feel warmth and pleasure and pain. And unfortunately for our skin, it has a lot of work to do protecting us because we certainly do our best to cut, burn, slice, scrape, or otherwise abuse it. Like Brian, who helped me come up with the idea for this video because he sliced his thumb on a food processor blade. Or me, who fell off a scooter two hours after I started writing the script, either because the universe was laughing at me or it was just trying to give me inspiration. We've all done something stupid like this, though maybe not as much as me. But after the initial pain, we barely give it a second thought as it heals up. But what if the wound doesn't heal like it's supposed to? If your body, because of other health issues, is unable to heal, there is only so much our bodies can do. And for people with chronic wounds, this is their reality. These wounds can get very nasty, and they often just don't heal. Infections become a very serious risk. Caring for these types of wounds also puts the healthcare system under a huge amount of strain. Coming up with better wound treatments is one of science's greatest modern day tasks, and there is no easy answer. But recent developments in bioengineering and microbiology indicate that one solution might involve something unexpected, electricity, and in particular, electric bandages. Before we investigate this new technology, let's first understand the normal wound healing process. There are many different types of open wounds. Abrasion, when your skin rubs or scrapes against a rough or hard surface, like road rash. Laceration, a deep cut or tearing of your skin, like getting cut with a knife. Or puncture, a small hole caused by a long pointy object, such as a needle, nail, or even a bullet. There are more than this too. There are so many ways to hurt yourself. But grossness aside, the way wounds heal like this is absolutely amazing when you stop to think about it. The normal healing process is often called the cascade of healing and is divided into four phases. Hemostasis, inflammation, proliferative, and maturation. Hemostasis starts as soon as you get injured. The primary goal here is to stop the bleeding. Within seconds of the injury, the body activates the blood clotting system. During this process, a type of blood cell called a platelet starts to form a cluster. The clot also contains a protein called fibrin, which forms a net to hold the clot in place. After about three hours, the wound has sufficiently sealed itself and enters the inflammation phase. This phase focuses on destroying any pathogens that may have entered the wound. One of the most important immune cells are a type of white blood cell called macrophages that arrive to clear debris, engulfing it through a process called phagocytosis. This part of the process is much more complicated than this. It could be a whole video by itself. Once the wound is cleaned out, the proliferative phase begins, where the wound is filled and covered. First, fibroblasts enter the wound and produce collagen, which makes up our connective skin tissue. Then, epithelial cells that form the outermost part of our skin cover the outside of the wound. At this point, the wound is fully closed, but the tissue is not completely back to normal. During the maturation phase, the new tissue slowly gains strength and improved flexibility. Collagen fibers reorganize, the tissue remodels and matures, and there is an overall increase in tensile strength. For most small injuries and for most otherwise healthy people, this cascade of healing happens without issue. But if a wound is large or chronic, it's often not this easy. Chronic wounds often happen in people with diabetes for a number of reasons. Elevated blood glucose damages tissue, reduces blood flow, and can lead to damaged nerves. This then can cause a loss of sensation, especially in their limbs, and so patients don't feel developing blisters or infections as they happen. These wounds can go unnoticed and can get very bad, and they are often characterized by one of the deadliest and most persistent types of infections, bacterial biofilms. In general, bacteria have two life forms during growth and proliferation. In one form, the bacteria exist as single independent cells and are usually the type found in acute infections. These can generally be treated with antibiotics. In the other form, the bacteria are organized into tight clusters. These clusters are known as bacterial biofilm. 
antibiotics that can easily kill individual bacteria are often useless against the same types of cells when they form these dense communities. Because the bacteria in the biofilm protect themselves behind a layer of sugar polymers and proteins, which the body's defenses and antibiotics cannot always penetrate. This makes this type of infection very persistent and very hard to kill. Biofilms can also colonize medical devices and implants, such as catheters, prosthetic joints, and heart valves. 65% of hospital-acquired infections are caused by bacteria growing as biofilms. There are 1.7 million of these infections annually in U.S. hospitals alone, and nearly 100,000 associated deaths. Biofilms are thought to claim as many lives as cancer every year. For years, scientists have come up with different ways to fight biofilms, like inventing antimicrobial surfaces for hospital devices, or by attempting to break down their protective coating. But these methods have their limitations. So this is why scientists are now battling biofilms in a totally different way, with electricity. Killing bacteria with electricity is surprisingly not a new concept. In 1992, it was reported that a low-strength electric field helped to kill biofilms that formed on stainless steel. This was a significant discovery, but scientists did not yet know why it worked, and therefore applying it elsewhere was problematic. Some theorized that the electricity disrupted the bacteria's electrostatic bonding with the surface, or by damaging them through electroporation. But it wasn't until many years later, in 2015, that one possible mechanism for this electric disruption started to be revealed. Like with any community of organisms, these bacteria that make up the biofilm have to communicate with one another. It was thought for years that this communication only happened chemically. But now, scientists understand that they can also send messages electrically, using potassium ions to propagate electrical signals, much like neurons do. This allows the bacteria to organize and synchronize activities across large expanses, and recruit new bacteria individuals to their community. This was a huge discovery, and has big implications for how biofilm infections can be treated. If communication is disrupted, bacteria can perhaps be tricked into dispersing and made vulnerable to antibiotics or the body's defenses. Following this idea, researchers have developed wound dressings that use an electric field to disrupt biofilm infection, called WEDs or wireless electroceutical devices. One type of WED electrochemically self-generates around one volt of electricity upon contact with body fluids, such as wound fluid or blood. It uses a pattern of silver and zinc embedded into the fabric, which, when moistened, generates a weak electric field without any external power supply. The electricity is not enough to hurt or electrocute the patient, but is enough to disrupt the bacterial biofilm. One study showed that a silver-zinc electroceutical wound dressing, along with an acellular dermal matrix, provided full healing within six weeks on wounds that conventional care had been unable to close in up to two years. This may be because it disrupts bacterial communication in part, along with generating superoxides toxic to the bacteria. In addition to its bacteria-fighting abilities, electricity also seems to help boost the human immune response. Researchers found that electric charges recruit certain immune cells like macrophages to the wound site, which further accelerates healing. Researchers determined that the electric shocks were stimulating angiogenesis, which is the growth of new blood vessels. These new blood vessels can then deliver more blood flow and immune cells to the damaged area, allowing the wounds to heal faster. The research is now focused on how to develop the technology to stimulate the same response in real-world clinical practice to make what is essentially an electronic band-aid. Some electroceutical devices are already FDA-approved and on the market but there is still a lot of room for this technology to be refined. But because electricity and wound healing seems to be beneficial in many ways, it will continue to be studied rigorously, hopefully with more advanced electroceuticals on the market soon. Wound treatment is one of the biggest strains on the healthcare system, so new technologies like electric bandages could be one solution to help alleviate that pressure. How hospitals treat patients largely relies on the technology and supplies available to them, and the coordination of efforts of many professionals. 
Even when times are normal, the logistics of this are complicated. But when extreme circumstances arise, the levels of coordination needed to keep everyone alive and well can feel insurmountable. As we currently witness the strain the hospitals are facing due to this ongoing pandemic, we are starkly reminded of how fragile it all is and how grateful we all need to be to those who are working tirelessly to keep shelves stocked, patients cared for, and supplies flowing to those who need them most. If you want to learn more about what is being done to slow down this infectious disease, you can watch Coronavirus Combating the Outbreak on CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is a streaming platform that has thousands of high-quality, high-budget documentaries. So if you're at home, like me, looking for ways to occupy yourself during this unprecedented era of self-isolation, these documentaries are an excellent way to both entertain and educate yourself. And to make it even better, CuriosityStream has partnered with Nebula. Nebula is a place for us to explore topics that might get demonetized on YouTube, and allows us to create exciting original content. Real Engineering's Logistics of D-Day series is one Nebula original that explores the planning of the Allies' successful invasion of Normandy on D-Day, from deciding on where to invade to how they maintain their crucial supply lines. And there are many more originals, like Working Titles, which is a collaborative series where different YouTube creators break down their favorite TV show intro. I just released an episode where I analyze the intro for Westworld and explore the show's themes about the ethics of artificial intelligence. And because Nebula has partnered with CuriosityStream, if you sign up using the link below, you'll get access to not just CuriosityStream, but Nebula as well, for now just $14.99 a year, and be supporting a community of creators that want to keep bringing you new and exciting content during this weird, weird time.